Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. What's happening to him? I think he's switching genres. We need distance. Head south. Is that a standard issue? No. It's not. Point and shoot. ahead. Maintain speed. Maintaining speed. Sharp left. Now. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Right off the top, we are writing a scene for Westworld. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is part of the Spitfire scoring competition 2020. And I'm really hoping that this is not totally blocked on YouTube. I was actually just checking. That's why I was uh, playing around with the, the screen frame size and everything. Because on my end, it's totally yelling at me saying, no, this is going to be blocked and all that good stuff, even though we have permission to use it. Anyway, um, so what I want to show you guys really quick as we pop over here, I want to show you guys what the heck is going on today and why you should be a part of it. So if you go over to spitfireaudio.com slash Westworld, there is a competition going on right now for the next month. It's a Westworld scoring competition and here any of you guys can enter and be a part of it. They've given us an action sequence from episode five of season three of Westworld composed by Ramin Jawadi. Um, and we have lots of big names on this. For those who are not familiar with Westworld, it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So Spitfire is doing this crazy competition where they're giving away a grand prize of $20,000 of their Spitfire Audio Everything Drive, which has over 70 products on it, 2.5 terabytes of sound. It's pretty insane. They also have five runner-ups who will be winning the Spitfire Symphony Orchestra which is not a small prize either because that thing is, you know, 1700 bucks um, featuring their best woodwinds, brass, and strings. So that's a really cool prize. And so what we're doing is as uh, to be able to enter, what we do is we score this scene and then we upload it to YouTube and we tag it with the Westworld Scoring Competition 2020 hashtag. Enter with a little form as long as you're done. By June 3rd, 2020, you have a chance to win. And it's going to be uh, judged by the producers of the show, including J.J. Abrams, which I think is a pretty cool deal. And so I wanted to take my swing at this today, and I wanted to see, you know, what can we what can we do with this? And I was hoping this could be a fun little tutorial to show you guys how I would approach scoring to picture. Uh, we don't talk enough about film scoring here on this channel, and I really want to get better about that. A lot of you guys have been asking about it. After all, the Screen Music Academy um, 
represents film, TV, video games, and podcasts. And so those are really the four arenas that I am in. And so my goal here today is, so long as this is not completely blocked by YouTube, let me know in the chat if you can actually see this. I think you can. Um, you can see the picture. It might be blocking it. I don't know. Um, but the goal here today is just to go through and, and to score this thing. So a quick note I want to make right at the top. If you are entering this competition, please do not listen to the temp track. Um, please do not go listen to the actual episode. Please do not go listen to a bunch of Ramin Jawadi music and um, Hans Zimmer music and kind of the, the style that this show is in. And I feel like I have a very unique advantage here today because I know nothing about Westworld. I've never seen the show and I don't know a lot about Ramin Jawadi. I know what he's done. I know the types of shows and things. Obviously, Game of Thrones is one of his big ones. Injures game is I think he did no that was um, Steve Jablonski. No, no, I don't know. Um, I know he's a, he's a really big force in Hollywood. So my point here today is that anytime you surround yourself with what is already out there in soundtracks, the best case scenario is you're going to sound like them, but you will not sound as good as them, and then you're always going to be a mimicker and a copycat and that kind of thing. So my goal here today is to just encourage you guys to, to do it, but don't don't go listen to the temp track. Um, and I, I just think I have a unique advantage because I don't know anything about the show. Um, I just looked it up today to see what the heck it is. I know it's really big right now. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV, to be totally honest, um, but I think it's a, a great advantage. So what I did want to show is I do think it's very imperative that before you write any music for a client, especially something like this, you at least need to know what the show is about. That way you can hit the, the right style. So I, I want to read a tiny bit of this just so we're in the same page here. So Westworld, um, obviously it's a science fiction, Western and dystopian TV series. I know that much. Um, I think the most important part to learn here is it's about a fictional technological, technologically advanced Wild West themed amusement park populated by Android hosts. And then it talks about how there's three different uh, this is the third season and and how there's different time periods associated with it so like it starts off in 1976 but then at the end we're in the mid 21st century where it's a lot more modernized and i know that in the third season we're now in a more modernized civilization and i think that's about all you want to know otherwise you're gonna start copying so when you download the files if you're going to be a part of this competition if you download the files from spitfire you get four different files i think this is worth showing real quick um, we get four different clips. We have the actual clip scored with some temp music. That's why it says TX at the end. And I believe someone in the chat said that it, it's uh, Richard Wagner, which is the classical composer, or maybe it's Ramin Jawadi. I don't really care. Um, I'm not going to listen to it because I don't think that's going to serve us at all. If anything, that will hurt us. Um, and then it gives us the sound effects and the dialogue, but with no music, exactly how you'd get it if you're a composer for a show. Um, but it gives us two versions. It gives us the, the 1080p and the 720p. Um, I would always recommend that you do 720p in your sessions because what happens is if you start loading up with all your sample instruments, all of your RAM and CPU usage are being hogged by the video um, if it's a really large, high-quality video, which nobody needs. Um, so 720p is, is plenty. If you want to go lower, go lower. Um, but I just want to warn you guys against that. Don't, don't get caught up in that storm. The other thing we have to make sure we do from the very beginning is we set the project sample rate and the frames frame rate to match the picture. So you can see right here, the project rate is 30 FPS, um, which is wrong. And then the video is 23.98. So what we want to do is make sure that we are uh, matching those two. So regardless of what DAW you are in, you do want to make sure that you do that. I believe inside here, we can set that right here and under project setup within Cubase. So I wanna make sure my project frame rate is the same, 2398. And I'm glad that that yelled at me or else I probably would have written this whole thing today and then it wouldn't have worked. So there, now it's set. And the whole purpose behind that is when we start writing music and scoring the scene, um, if they did not match, then all of a sudden my music would like not match the picture. It would be too fast or too slow. So it's a very important thing to do at the beginning as well. And my sessions are already automatically set to 48 kilohertz, K, so 48K as we say, 24-bit sample rate. That's always the WAV file um, resolution you wanna to send to clients. So make sure that if you're gonna do this, you do that to look professional. And then a second note, really probably the biggest note of today. 
If you're going to do this competition, be unique. No one wants another Ramin Jawadi. That's not why they're doing this competition. They want you to be unique. I've done a lot of competitions in the past, and I always got really frustrated because if I didn't win, it's because I was trying to be like the composer instead of doing my own thing. J.J. Abrams does not want to hear another Ramin Jawadi. He just doesn't. He has him. He can hire him, right? So instead, he wants to hear what you can do. And I think it's important to be unique as possible. Don't feel like you have to have all the most expensive libraries out there in the world. I do think there has to be an orchestral feel. And I think we're going to have to have some kind of electronic feel because we're doing humans and androids. I mean, that's a very easy thing to notice. Um, but you could go super left field. You could go like the Tron Legacy album, like Daft Punk, right? You could go super hardcore electronic or you could go super hardcore orchestral. And I think it could still work. So there's really no wrong answer here. Um, there's a thousand ways to do this. Um, but I want to be interesting today. So whenever I get a, a fresh uh, scene, TV, film, documentary, whatever, I always chop it into sections. That's the most important thing you can do because if you don't have markers, you don't know what you're writing music to. Um, this usually takes a couple minutes, but it's well worth it. And so what I'm going to do is it's not a super long scene. It's what, four minutes long, three and a half minutes long. And I don't expect to finish it all today, but I want to get as far as I can. Um, but what I want to try to do here is let's find some of the, this is my first time watching it, by the way. Let's find some of the most important moments that seem to stand out. It feels to me like this entire beginning, it's, it's the, it's called act one of the scene. Um, it's the, the prep, right? So the emotion, let's always try to attach an emotion to it, an adjective to it. This is kind of like anxiety, right? We're anxious because we don't know what's about to happen. We're kind of storming in, in our, in our car here. And then stuff starts to go wrong right about here. Guess we're still preparing. Maintain speed. Maintaining speed. Sharp left. Now. And still we're just preparing. Okay. So right about here. We see this missile coming in. I missed. Hold on. Boom. I think that's a good act two marker. Uh, because that's going to be a shift in tone. Because now... We're like really in the middle of a battle. Um, we're really trying to get stuff done, right? So this feeling, I'm gonna say, maybe angry. It's a little dark tone because it's we're in a battle, but we're a little bit angry and we're we're more motivated. So it's gonna be maybe a different tempo. Right about there. You drop in, intersect, maximum speed. More nine. Let's figure out where the climax of this thing is. There. So we literally stopped the car. Act three. Stop the car. Why the f are we stopping? Get down. All right, so we have this big epic moment. Now, a moment like this that has a huge sound effect involved you don't need a lot of music, if any at all. You might just want to leave that silent. Because silence will actually tell more than music could ever tell if you have a lot of music and then you stop. So I think those are the three. It might change my mind a little bit, um, but those are really the three I wanted to hit. Now, the second most important thing we can do is we can set a tempo that matches each section. And if you could get the right tempo, everything else will fit and you could really write whatever you want and i think it's gonna feel good um and, and i should also mention that 99 percent of the composers haha <laughs> uh, Joel says oh no spoilers haven't seen this episode yet I'm sorry come back after you've seen the episode i guess um 
99% of the composers who enter this competition are going to write action music. And I don't think that's going to win. Um, I, I think it's really hard to be unique when you write action music because most of it sounds the same. It's all four chord pop music with, with epic strings, brass, and choir, and percussion. And I just don't think it's interesting. It's not, it doesn't really engage you. I want to try the 300 approach or the Braveheart approach, which is where we do something melodic. We do something maybe slow and beautiful that it, 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 when juxtaposed to the picture can like really be evocative and effective. Um, so I want to try that approach today. I think it'll have more of a statement and and have, I don't know, a better better chance in this thing. So let's try. So I think the first thing we have to do is grab our tempo. So I'm going to create a tempo track. Uh, where's that? Come on, Cubase. Where's my brain today? I don't have a brain on today. Oh yeah, I have to right click to do that one. It's a tempo track. I'll put that right here. Make it small so it doesn't take up too much space. And for this one, I'm gonna turn my click on. You can't hear it, but I'm gonna try to visually look at my bars, which are up here. You can see those. And obviously if I change that tempo up and down, for example, like 300, it'll space out the picture right here and I can see how things line up. And I think that's gonna be a really smart way. And it looks to me like we might even have to do it like a, a pre-act one. Like let's figure out where motion actually happens. So things are pretty chill right there. So I think right there, that's the first big sound effect. That would make sense to me if we do four bars, like that should be bar five, right where that sound effect happens. So what I wanna do is make, um, let me lock, unlock this, there we go. Let's make that super slow. And the way that I'm trying to do this is see this little blob right here. This is the sound effect that we're trying to match. We want this to land on bar five. Because typically you, four bars of music, you can make anything musical and have a phrase. So obviously it's nowhere near there. So we need to stretch this uh, maybe to 120, 140, 160, almost there, 170, too far. 168, there it is. You can see how exactly how the um, the waveform lines up with measure five. So now if we click it in, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, and boom. But that needs to be a different tempo right there. Film scoring is all about tempo changes. Would never, ever, ever do this entire scene as one tempo. It just wouldn't work. There's too many emotions, emotional changes. I'm trying to figure out why this is locked. Oh, is it this button? I'm still learning Cubase. I've been using it for a few, I guess like a year and I still don't know all of the tricks. I don't typically film score in Cubase, but I just love Cubase so much that um, I wanted to try it today. I don't know why. Maybe some of you guys know why. That's weird. Can I change it now? Yes, I can. Okay. I think I had it locked secretly. But I want to go to a slower tempo, maybe right here. I'm going to look for any kind of scene change, and I'm going to try to match the tempo to, to hit the cuts a little bit better. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. There it is. Maximum speed. Go. So that's like the maximum speed go, right? So I would even mark this as the real act one. But this is gonna be, we'll just call it shoot. So that's its own tempo. And we wanna make sure the maximum speed go is what triggers act one. Let's line Max it up. Maximum speed, go. I'll take it, I think that, that works. And then we'll change the tempo again here. Something much faster to fit the vibe because obviously we're doing a car chase thing, but we don't want to overdo it either. Let's try maybe 110. There it is. And so what I'm trying to do, as you can probably see, I really hope that you can see all this right now, 
you see how as soon as my marker hits the next bar, it should be changing the scene. That's how you know you have a good tempo for the cut. And change. And change. Yeah, that's probably going to work. And it might actually work in our favor more to play around with some time signatures. That's always a good way to keep the momentum. Let me go to signature here. And let's try, for example, let's just see if it, if it fits. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll scrap it, but let's try 5-4 here. One. Probably a good, good way to do that. And I'll leave it alone for now because that, that's plenty of material that we can at least start with. And the way that I would approach this personally is I'm probably going to do this in two sit down sessions, maybe three if, if I feel inclined um, to mix it and whatever. Um, but I want to try to do one, like a little chunk at a time. There's nothing more daunting than taking a four minute scene and trying to do it at once when it's this, um, I don't know this uh, changing when it changes this much because there's so much going on right so first thing i'm gonna grab is a piano because i feel like even if we don't end up using a piano we can always sketch with it and again i don't know anything about this score and i love not knowing anything about it Definitely gonna be some synth elements in this, so let's play around, shall we? Let's grab massive. I'm typically more experimental when I don't when I use a plug I'm not as familiar with, which might be good today. Um, so I'm literally just gonna kind of freeform. Let's try dark zebra. That's something. I use, but I don't use it all the time, so I don't have it mastered. Um, so it might be kind of cool just to experiment a little bit. Oh, you can definitely, Rob says in the chat, it can be done in one session. Absolutely, you can write five minutes a day, easy. But I want to give myself the break and the breath and the, the rest between sessions to kind of come at it with fresh perspective. I like that a lot. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's gonna be really cool. So this is gonna be a synth pulse. Keep it simple. Let's just see what we can do with. I'm gonna turn on uh, since I'm gonna be punting it a lot today. Down here in Cubase, there's a cool button. It's the activate count in. You can change when the count in happens. I like to do one bar count. And that way, I can literally just play like this. I can punch it in on the bar. One, two, three, four. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Like that. It's pretty cool. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable. I want to know why. I think because I had to click on. Approaching now. 
I think it's really important to score with the sound effects on because the VO and the sound effects are actually the the story. That's that's the most important part, right? So if my music gets in the way of that, then we, we're doing it wrong. So it might be a little bit annoying for you to hear it over and over again like this, but if that's the case, peace out. You don't have to be a part of this, but appreciate those who want to learn, who want to come check this out. Um, notice how I'm really trying to dodge what's happening on screen and I'll mix as I go. I don't think there needs to be like a dedicated mixing process necessarily. I really think synth elements are going to be really important here. Um, and I'll show you my left screen here as we go. If I get my dang controls to work. There we go. Um, I like that, that synth a lot, but it needs to be EQ'd like crazy or else it's going to be the first thing that they hate. All right, you don't want anybody hating your music. Or it can never get in the way. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go so do you feel you hear how it's present, but it's not in the way? That's what EQs are good for. Keeping something exactly where you want it. I need. I want to do some like experimental piano today. Um, let's play around with. I don't know. Let's grab an EQ first. Let's make this a super like muddy, like that. That's pretty cool, right? So I'm just playing. Um, just kind of playing some D's on the piano. But you hear how when I EQ it out, here's what it would sound like. this growly like anxiety right and then we can even add some stereo delay on it I mean, if we're gonna go if we're gonna go experimental we have to go all the way right that's pretty cool I'll pop it over where you can see it so all I'm doing is I'm playing D's and holding the pedal it has this and I do want to uh, scoop out the lows I don't want that to go beyond 20 whoopsies I don't want it to go below 20 Hertz Like that's pretty menacing, don't you think? It's pretty, pretty creepy, but it's not like over the top. It's not in your face. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Nice. And that was only three notes that I played. But by holding my pedal like that, you can see how the delay did its thing. That's the beauty of delay. I do think the delay would maybe have been a tiny bit strong, so make the mix and the feedback a little bit less on both sides. Here's what it sounds like again. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. And do you feel how we change the tempo, and yet the delay still caught up? And and it's such a subtle thing, but we went from slow tempo to faster tempo, and now we're going to go to an even faster tempo. And by just kind of breaking it into these tiny sections, it's so subconscious, but it just like whoo, it, it like grabs us into the scene, and it makes it so much more interesting than just one stupid tempo the whole time. Oh boring this way definitely takes more work but it's it's well worth that by the way let me just uh put clip audio here at the top that way we don't steal all of our real estate here keep it right there that way we can still mute it if we need to all right uh, i'll do the same thing with the video because there's no need to even have that showing at all Alrighty. 
What shall we add next? I want some kind of, uh, I don't want to overwrite, but I want something that has like a stringy, a pad, but I don't want to go over the top. So let's try gravity by heavy, uh, heavy -ocity. Um, call it gravity pad. This also needs to be heavily, heavily EQ'd out so we don't go over the top here. But I want to grab some of these, one of these airy and breathy, breathy patches. Also, a little uh, composition tip here. Whenever you're writing for um, TV, try not to go over the top. Like, don't go over the top with your major or minor chords. Try to do more two chords or four chords, six chords, nine chords, anything that does not have an overt major or minor. So like this would sound really dumb if I just did a minor like that. It just, it doesn't really do anything emotionally versus a two chord or four chord, All right, or six. Or nine. Like those are just so much more interesting. It's so simple, right? It doesn't require more notes. It just requires different um, phrasing, I guess. Let's keep experimenting. That's cool. So I'm gonna call that, it's gonna be a, a glitch pad. That'll be really cool later when we're like getting into more action-y stuff. Um, so let's clean it up so that we can use it for that. I'll find a spot for it later. Um, but let's do the pro Q again. Uh, let's find the, like it's a good spot for this. super Android-y to me. Uh, let's also do a delay on that. I have no idea how I want to use that, but perhaps a little bit later in the, in the scene Right about there. Like that overhead shot. All right, I need you drop in, intercept, maximum speed. Cool, and that's obviously the now that we've uh, butchered the, uh, it might still work. I was gonna say once we've messed, we've now messed with the tempo, so that's why things are kind of not locked in. I don't even know if this is a feature within Cubase. I know Logic and Digital Performer, you can lock a marker in time to the SMPTE code. Um, that way it actually stays. Uh, it's not a huge deal right now, but that'd be something cool to experiment with. If anybody knows if that's a function in Cubase, I'd love to know. I just I haven't done a lot of film scoring in here. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Cool. Um, let's keep going. I I love man my my gut is not my gut but like my my training my experience in in doing this stuff is screaming, grab the ostinato strings, do the dun 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 but it's so cliche, and I just, I can't, I can't. Um, if this was due tonight, 
I would, to be honest, just because I know it works and it would please people. But this is not the purpose of this exercise. The purpose of this today is to experiment, to go way out of our comfort zone, to do something cool and interesting. Um, so let's keep going in that direction because so far I think we're there. I want to grab Indy. I, I just feel like this is so left field that it might just work because I can just I can already hear everything that people are going to be submitting. It's just going to be super cliche, academic, over the top, either over the top epic trailer style, or it's going to be I don't know, just boring, boring, stale action sequence music. No one cares about that. That that has never sold and will never sell yourself as a composer. Ooh, Ginger Beard in the chat might just save the day. They say to right click on the marker track, select. Oh no, take it back. No, come back. They removed their post. I was actually reading it. Maybe they, maybe they need to change the instructions. But I'm super curious. Oh, this is loading anyway. I can't really do anything. Got lots of lots of fun comments in the chat though. Appreciate you guys being here, being a part. I'll answer as many as I can if there's some dead time. Um, let me go, let me figure this out. Is it something like this, like track control settings? I just don't even know. There's so many parameters within Cubase that I just haven't learned that one yet. Oh, they're back. Thanks, Ginger Beard. All right, right click on the market track, done. It's like track control settings. I was close. Click on the toggle time base. Ooh, fancy. Option to make it visible. Ooh. Use that button to switch track to absolute time. Use that button. Is it this thing? Toggle between musical and linear. Is that the button we're talking about right there? I wonder. Because if that is the case, then that would mean that I can move this. That's cool. Can you confirm if that's how it works? If so, you just became my hero for the day. Thank you. All right, so I got Indy out because what would sell this more than a string quartet? Just saying. I know that's always a weird, that's a super weird thing to say, but I, I, some of my favorite films of all times during big action sequences chose to use very small sounds and it just, ah, it just works. And uh, Philemon Holmes says, I, I kind of want to see if some sort of jazz and electronic fusion might work for this. That could be fun to do. Hey, if that's your thing, do it. I don't write jazz or electric fusion at all, electronic fusion. So by all means, go show us how it's done. <laughs> um, so here's what I wanted to play around with. If this even works right now. I'd love to know why it's not working. No, I'd be really sad if this... I want a string quartet. Like that. Come on. There it is. So what I want to do is I want to load this up really quick. I haven't used this in a hot minute, so I need to go in here, go to string quartet. So I want to just find some phrases that are string quartet only. Kind of load it up here. Different ideas. Like that. Like that makes sense to me. Because you're expecting this big action sequence. Maybe that'll that'll scratch the itch of wanting to do strings. Like that. That's cool. Don't want any of that kind of stuff. 
I don't even know if it's gonna work, guys, but it's, you gotta try stuff. A couple more and I'm done here. Last one. That's a good one. Cool. And I'm gonna lock. I know this. No. It reset. Dang it. No. There's an undo button. Oh, that's the worst in the whole world. Yikes. Okay, now that I know what to do, I have to, the, the, to clock the lock button between these. Oh. Sorry. That way it doesn't do exactly what just happened, which is where it hit the wrong key switch. And the whole thing changes. So, pardon me for the extra time here. Shoot. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate that, Rob. He's like, do your thing, Steven. Yeah. I will do my thing. If it kills me. I think this could be such a cool texture. It's worth this extra minute of flipping, reloading it. What a pain. It's not the sample's fault. It's totally my fault for pushing the wrong thing button. I had it coming. I mean, you don't blame, you don't blame Cubase if I accidentally hit the quit button, you know? It's not it's not his fault. All these are already like in major and they'll sound better once I get them in minor. Cool, okay, they're locked and loaded. Oh, save. <laughs> uh, cool, so I have no idea if this is gonna work at all, but, but now that I have lots of things loaded, I could actually do something. So that's in D minor at the moment. Like that. Verified. Enable semi automatic control. Disable safety. Thank you for. I have to be very careful not to use my pedal. I've done this before with Sony Kinetic Libraries where I accidentally, I'm so used to holding the pedal when I change keys in the keyboard that it'll actually smear them all together and that, that happens. Um, but this could, this could work. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control, disable safety features. Maximum speed, go. That's pretty cool. If you're gonna use these kind of libraries, you gotta be really dead accurate with your uh, samples. You do not want anything to overhang and you don't want anything to be unquantized. Otherwise the whole phrase based library thing comes to a halt. It's also super loud in the mix, which is not good. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. So let's see. Just for my sanity, I'm going to copy this. And let's see if all the patches stay the same. I'd be very curious to know. I really hope they do. It's gonna take an extra second because it's a lot of patches that I have active. Yay, it worked. Hooray, hooray. So I'm gonna have two of these loaded. That way I can, I don't have to worry about timing so much. So for example, I can just punch in the second one. That way it doesn't bleed over from the first one. Now I have to be very careful though. I gotta do my key switches right before it happens. I think that's how that works. So 
I think it's this one. Is that how we do it? No, it's not how you do it. Oh, that is the one. Okay, okay, okay. Pardon my... Okay, I just gotta figure this out again. Oh, interesting. I have to hold... That's right. That's what separates this from the other Sony Connect libraries. You have to actually continue holding a trigger note. It's not just a key switch. It's an actual, like, trigger. Which is good. I actually think that makes it easier to write. So, we were in D minor. Maybe something like this. That's cool. That's going to really make that shine. Because it's like a... Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Yeah, I'm loving this so far. So let's grab Indy 2. There it is. We'll go back to 4-4, four, four, it's fine. Faster tempo, that's pretty sick. Maximum speed. Get some Colinho. That'll work really well on the inside of the car because it's quieter. So let's actually move that directly to the scene where she it's inside the car because it feels different right there. See that? Yep, that's good. What's happening to him? Oh, I think he's switching genres. That's really cool. So let's do that for the extent of that little scene. Pretty easy to stretch it out. Good, it ends right there. Right on cue, right on beat. That's how you know you have a good tempo. Looks like this. I need to come in sooner. One, two, three, boom. Yep, need to come in sooner. So here's a quick little instance of signature. I can really just punch this in as uh, a three, four. So let's do three, four. This would be the new four, four. That way the phrase can come in sooner. And it's still gonna keep everything intact. Mm. Yep, and there it is. There's the next one. So I'll even put a marker here. They're just kind of like little markers. I'll say inside car, and then back outside again for this part. It's gonna be really cool. And notice, I'm just I'm doing little puzzle pieces, and they don't connect yet. But as I do more puzzle pieces, everything starts to be seamless as I go back and, and watch it through. So a quick water break while I listen to feel this thing out so far. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Okay, 
Okay, let's do a piano that has no EQ. Or at least not a, I'll say no effects. I liked how warm that was with the EQ, but it was a little bit too much. Switching genres. It's an important moment, right? One, two, three, four. What's happening to him? I think he's switching genres. I'm pretty sure that thing's recorded in 3 4. Yeah, that's totally in 3 4. Actually works out better. Go back to the four four here, because then I can extend that. The final beats that was missing. Hooray! Time signature switching. What's happening to him? I think he's switching genres. the bottom one works not the second not the half second half i think having that cool glitch pad will help make it what's happening to him i think he's switching genres This hmm partial on the synth. Let's keep let's mute that for a second. Not sold. Let's get the piano in here. Like that. What's happening? 
bathroom. Oh, I think he's switching genres. That's way cooler. Because it actually creates some nice little, like, extra pulse in there. What you think, guys? So we can do for this uh, act one little section. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Oh no. 